Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Uh, we're going to look at the third week of July, um, 2023. So let's get started. So as we're looking at the third week of July, we're looking at uh, July 16th through the 22nd. Um, there's not nothing much happening um, on the 16th. But on the 17th, Monday, July 17th, we have Mercury mega first quarter square to Jupiter. This is a crisis in action square. Um, the Mercury-Jupiter combination uh, is the combination connected with uh, the way we learn, okay? It's the, it's the axis of the mind, Mercury being the ruler of Gemini, Jupiter being the ruler of Sagittarius. It is a mentally... It, it, both planets deal with uh, how our mind works and how we take in information. Now, um, we had an initial conjunction between Jupiter and Mercury that occurred in Aries. Now we are a quarter of the way through that cycle. We have the crisis in action. And so it's about taking an action on the seed planted. And we'll take a look at that. Also on the 17th, we have the new moon in Cancer. Uh, this new moon is at 26 degrees of Cancer. And it's a very, very powerful um, moon for, for many, many reasons. Um, one of them being that this new moon actually aspects all four outer planets. And the outer planets are there to break down um, the to break down the um, the structures that keep us from having a broader perspective, having a bigger perspective. In fact, um, Jane Rudger called the transpersonal planets, which he was counting uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto as ambassadors of the galaxy. They bring in this galactic energy. Well, we also have Eris, which was just... Uh, uh, discovered in the early 2000s, so we can add Eris to the to the mix on this. And so, what happens is we have a sextile of this new moon to Uranus. We have a trine to Neptune. Both sextiles and trines are flowing aspects. They are e what we, what is considered easy aspects. We have an opposition to Pluto, which is not an easy aspect. When we have a square to Eris, the opposition to Pluto. We, we need to bring awareness to something. And then the square to Eris is, um, in this case, a first quarter crisis in action square to Eris. So we wanna take action and Eris is an energy of a revolution, okay? So that's the energy with this new moon and we'll look at the new moon and the light. Um, also on the 17th, 17th is a very, very busy day. Good thing nothing happened on the 16th because you're gonna need all your rest for the 17th. Uh, we have the moon's nodes shift. Now the moon's nodes have been in North Node Taurus, South Node Scorpio for a little over 18 months since uh, January of 2022. And on the 17th, they uh, change signs where the North Node moves into Aries and the South Node moves into Libra. The nodes of the moon are not planetary bodies like the moon is or Mars or Mercury, but points in space. And they have a mean retrograde motion, meaning that they move from 30 degrees to one degree. So it starts at 30 degrees and then moves all the way to one degrees and takes about 18, I think, I think it's 18.5 or 18.6 um, months to do that. Um, the ruler of the North Node now is Mars because Aries is a Mars world sign. The ruler of the South Node is um, um, oh God, Venus. Ah, just wouldn't come out of my mouth. You know why? Because Venus so a couple of days after this, right? At the end of this week, Venus goes retrograde. So she didn't want to come out of my mouth. Um, the ruler of the North Node, as the node shift, the ruler is in Virgo. 
which is very pragmatic and very practical. So that matters. In the south node the, uh, with Venus, Venus is in uh, Leo, okay? Venus in Leo, self-expressive Leo. Then on Thursday, the 20th, we get a little rest. <laughs> Thursday, the 20th, we have the sun making a waxing trine to Neptune. This is pretty nice. We just had, uh, last week, we had the um, uh, Mercury trine Neptune. Now we have the sun trine Neptune. This brings in those otherworldly energies in a flowing way. Um, this is a trine of creative self-expression. So that's lovely. However, we also that day have Mars making an opposition to Saturn. And uh, this is a difficult aspect and it's a difficult aspect to have in your chart. Um, it's, it's as if you're, you're, you're driving down the road with one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas. So it's, it can be like a stop and go. There can be, uh, or, or there can be with opposition sometimes you'll flip from one side to the other. So it's like you're absolutely pushing yourself and then you end up pushing yourself too hard and you hit the wall that is Saturn and you end up hurting yourself or doing something where now you have to spend a period of time not moving at all. So uh, we have to be careful of that at this time. This is This opposition between Mars and Saturn is the fruition point, okay, halfway through, halfway halfway through the cycle. And because we're dealing with Mars, it's a two-year synodic cycle. Most synodic cycles, uh, when you're dealing, well, not most of them, but um, Sun, Mercury, um, anytime Mars is involved, there's two years because of where it sits in, in, the, in relation to the Earth and the other planets. Um, but the seeds planted at the Mars-Saturn conjunction, which actually occurred back on the 4-4 portal 2022. Uh, you can go back, I have a video on that if you wanna check it out, see what I said back then, because right now this is coming, whatever seed was planted at that time is coming to fruition. Uh, it occurred at 23 degrees of Aquarius, the initial conjunction. Uh, it says a big bear sitting down, waving all its paws. Uh, the keynote is the self-discipline, which results from an intelligent development of individual facilities under proper training. So at that time, there was this seed being planted of you training yourself for something. And now we come to this opposition and we get to see the, um, the fruit that is being born on this. On this. And then now for the next half of the cycle, we have uh, we take that fruit and we distribute it to out into the outer world because most of everything that's been going on with Saturn and uh, Mars has been sort of underneath underground, but not not ready for prime time yet. And now we're ready for prime time with Saturn and, and Mercury, so we can see how well we can. Uh, lay on our back and, and move our paws in, in different directions. On Friday, the 21st, we have the sun make an opposition to Pluto. This is another halfway point of a synodic cycle. Um, the sun illuminates and Pluto is the world soul. So when the sun is opposing Pluto, there is this energy of seeing what the world soul wanted to express. The sun is, is, is the energy of beingness, of expressing. So something about the world soul comes into being, some sort of awareness. And that's really what it is, an awareness. Now you can, sometimes this energy can create power struggles because you know people who are in power may not like to see what the world soul has to say, or people who are finally feeling powerful because of whatever transformational process they've gone through is they want to express that power. So we do have to watch out for challenges and uh, and and um, power struggles or, or power plays actually. So it's best to just step back from this because it is uh, oppositions are not about action. Oppositions are about awareness. We really come aware of what we're up against, so to speak. Okay. Um, so this was the fruition, this is the fruition, the halfway point of the Sun-Pluto cycle. 
uh, that began at the Sun-Pluto conjunction, which uh, occurred on the 18th of uh, January of 2023. And that was at 29 degrees of Capricorn, a woman reading tea leaves. Uh, the ability to see the signature of hidden meaning in every occurrence drawing one's attention. So we really are, um, we're, we're having to learn how to read the signs. I saw the signs and it opened up my eyes. I saw the signs. Okay. <laughs> That's been in my head because there's a Staples commercial now that they keep playing it. And I've always loved that. So it's kind of cool to hear it again, but not necessarily associating it with Staples. All right. On to something else. Uh, on Saturday, the 22nd, we have Venus station retrograde. This Venus station retrograde is very, very powerful. Anytime Venus stations goes retrograde, um, we have, it's part of a, of a larger eight-year cycle. Eight years ago, 2015, we had Venus uh, go retrograde in the same, uh, in, in Leo as well. And so if you have Leo in your chart, in my case, I have a Leo rising, um, it becomes significant. Like a Leo planets, if you have planets in Leo, it's, this is a significant Venus retrograde cycle for you and usually uh, indicates some sort of change in, um, change in your, uh, cultural environment, new friends, new home, new relationship, new job, just something changes, something changes. And, 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 the, and the life that you create now, you're creating on this sort of new platform. Um, and then we have on the same day, the sun ingress into Leo. And of course, Leo is ruled by the sun. So when the sun is in Leo, it's very, very powerful. And, uh, and then we have this need to creatively self-express. So we're gonna, we're gonna see people doing a lot of expression here. And because Pluto is opposite the sun, just the day before, it's, Pluto is still opposite the sun. It's just that now the sun has moved in from a very shy sign of Cancer into a not so shy sign of Leo. So we can expect to hear quite a bit quite a bit. And this is one of the one of the weeks where really there's really really big shifts. This week and next week because next week we have Pluto square the nodes three times. I know it's hard to believe, but actually because of wobbles and the different things and where Pluto is sitting and how the nodes are working, three uh three exact squares to Pluto, but we'll talk about that next week. Um, and so that Pluto square the nodes is an evolutionary crossroads. Of course, with Pluto, it doesn't have to be exact. We are feeling this. We've been feeling this for years. Uh, it just, it's going to come to a head. And uh, we're going to see that head next week. Heads are going to roll. All right. So let's get going and uh, go to the next slide here. Maybe. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. So we talked about Mercury making that first quarter square to Jupiter, the two planets that have um, sort of con not control, but um, a ru rule the mind, the axis of the mind in, uh, in, a, in a chart that would be the third house and the ninth house, right? The third house is the natural house for Gemini, the ninth house, the natural House for Sagittarius, that Sagittarius energy, which is is rule Sagittarius, is our intuitive facility, and the uh, the Mercury side, the Gemini side, right, is our reasoning mind. Now, when two planets come together in a conjunction, they plant a seed. That seed was at 19 degrees of Aries, and it says um, the magic carpet of Oriental imagery. The use of creative imagination, hmm, that's the keynote. So, you know, we talk about creating our own reality. We can create our own reality. You know, it's interesting because just recently I was watching um, 
a video on um, it was a it was a Midas Touch video. I think oh my god, what's it called? Weekend, weekend something. Anyway, it's this English guy. He's on the Midas Touch network, and uh, I will put it in the I'll put it down in the um, descriptor. In fact, I'll put the link so you can watch it if you want. But the person that he was talking to was talking about um, um, how do you, you know, people are, you know, with everybody being in this cult, this MAGA cult, this, all this other stuff, uh, how do you, they're, they're, they're like brainwashed. How do you get somebody out of a cult? And the, and the gentleman he was talking to was actually, a, I think a PhD or maybe, Maybe a, maybe an MD, I'm not sure, um, who had been in a cult. He'd been a Mooney. And uh, so now he studies cult behavior and how to deprogram people from cults and what you know his suggestions were. But one of the things that he said is they tell you in a cult that you create your own reality. And I was sort of taken back and I'm like, oh my God, is do they? Because I don't really know that much about cults. And then I and then I realized that you're creating your own reality, but it's not your reality. It's the reality of the leader. It's the person who's telling you what what's up and what you need to do to get what they need, right? The cult leader needs. And then I thought, well, yes, we create our own reality, but we have to make sure that the that where that vision and where that direction is coming from is within us, is within our own soul not what somebody else is telling us, but what we're getting from the inside. And so I got a little nervous there because I talk about creating a reality all the time. And then I'm like, oh, okay, good. Well, I, I understand the difference now. Like, I didn't know that was a, a thing, um, a cult thing, but I guess it's a cult thing. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so we do actually we are able to utilize our creative imagination, our vision for our life. What is our vision for our life? And sometimes we don't know how we're gonna get there. So what we need to do is we need to visualize it in our mind's eye. And that clicks in the creative imagination. And on the tree of life, the, the creative imagination is right there between the divine masculine of Hokma and the divine feminine of Baina. And it is the Empress card in the tarot. It's it's that's the creating your own reality, right? So that's what um, that's just thought something I thought I'd mention. Um, the keyword, the keyword, uh, a strife transcending, an unattached look upon everyday reality. So where we see strife, we need to come back, to move away from the strife and come back to the I am presence. And the other interesting thing about that is that I did a 777 portal reading and I wanted to I wanted to do a, um, I did the cards, I did the tarot cards, and then I wanted to do a, um, uh, use one of my Oracle decks, but I didn't have one handy. And I did have the I am, um, the I am book, the, um, the I am discourses. And I figured, well, I was doing the 777 portal. I should look on page 77. And it did say um, on 77, uh, says there should always be this wondrous grace of love, light, and obedience. It matters not the age of the individual, still the outer expression often for its need is obedience to the greater inner light. When the impulse surges forth to argue, criticize, or feel a resistance, it is your signal that the outer is intruding itself to demand attention. Then is, then is the time by the power of your free will to command the outer to be silent and obey the I am presence. So looking within, okay. Um, and then, we also have, of course, um, let's see. Oh, so at this point, right, we have the square. Mercury's at 12 degrees of Leo, an evening party of adults on a lawn illuminated by fancy lanterns. Group relaxation in fashionable surroundings as an escape from work routine. 
square Jupiter at 12 degrees of Taurus, a young couple window shopping. Uh, the keynote here is the fascination of the youthful ego with the products of its culture. So there is this sort of drive really to, in a way, with the at least with these symbols, it strikes me as you know, creating a reality that is reflective of the values and what's important and in some cases what's fashionable uh, in the culture. And and then also this this idea of um just giving your giving your giving yourself the time and the space to play okay um and we can see here here's jupiter at 12 degrees and here is um mercury at 12 degrees and we can see that it is a first quarter square um okay all right let's get on Let's look at this new moon in Cancer because it is very, very powerful. So we have the new moon in Cancer. Here it is. It is trine Neptune right here. Oops, right there. Neptune and Pisces. All right. It is sextile Uranus in Taurus. That's e that's actually tighter. It is opposing. Pluto here, and it is square Eris. Eris is right here. Uh, what degree is Eris? Darn it, I don't have it. It's it's about, of all this, I think Eris is the closest orb-wise. So that's square. So Eris is here. Here's the sun and moon. First quarter, crisis in action, square. Uh, wanting to, and, and Eris, and this is the chart of the U.S., Apologies for anywhere who lives anywhere else. This is a Washington DC charge I like to use just to kind of see where the country's at. And so this Eris is coming from a place of service, service, and it's squaring this new moon. Now the new moon for the United States is happening in the ninth house, which is foreign places. So this could be new relationships with foreign in foreign places here, opposing uh, Pluto. Now, Pluto in the third house can be the media, the media, right? And then we have um, uh, Uranus here in the seventh house asking us to relate in a new uh, and more progressive way. Uranus likes progressive. Uranus is a progressive energy. Um, it's, it's also a disruptive energy. So we can have some disruption uh, with um, our relationships abroad, you know, as this just as being a United States chart, but uh, we can see we have a grand square here that's made up of the the, the uh, new moon and Pluto and the nodes of the moon, because in a couple of days, the nodes of the moon are going to be moving into the cardinal signs. So we have this op, so we have this giant square here. Um, we also have a yod, and that yod is to Venus. That yod is to Venus, and Venus is about to go retrograde. So Venus is moving very, very slow, okay? And it's it's a yod, and we have a, a Neptune here and Pluto here, transpersonal planets with the, the uh, finger of God pointing at Venus saying what it, what is important to you what is your values and in leo it's about life and it's about expression and it's about creativity so what creative things what do you want to create right in your life okay so this a sabian symbol for 25 degrees of cancer is a willful man is overshadowed by a by descent of a superior power. It's very interesting at this time, isn't it? Especially as we consider what's going on um, really on the world stage with the ex-president of the United States and the Justice Department of the United States and the people and, the, and everybody and everybody. The keynote here is the response of spiritual forces to the integration of personality through positive, willful endeavors. 
We are dealing here with a man who uses his will and positive imagination in facing life's problems. To him comes the Pentecostal descent of power. He receives the mantle of power, the grace, ba, baraka of the Sufi philosophy, or the pr 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 providential assistance which can make him a true leader in his culture. This, in this symbol, we witness a more transcendent expression of success. It is not merely external success as given by society to its prima donnas, but a spiritual response, a sign of inner strength and uncommon endowment. So you do not have to be the president of the United States. You do not have to be Jack Smith. You don't, do not have to be Elon Musk or, Zuckerberg or any of these famous people, we all have the capacity to have spirit come in and empower, endow us with the capacity and the ability to have our will be met. Of course, will is very much an ego thing. And so there is this fine line between allowing your soul to come in and embody the ego and have the ego be a, uh, a conduit for soul. Or you can have the ego maniac, right? Which is, uh, is, is, is moving away from soul, right? Okay. Yeah, so powerful, powerful new moon. I mean, I don't know how else to, to, to talk about it. So we also have, of course, on the same day, did I say it was going to happen a couple of days later? Same day, uh, the node shift. So the node shift into Aries, Libra from Taurus, Scorpio. This means that the, the rulers of the node shift, uh, the ruler of the north node uh, in Aries is now in Virgo at five degrees of Virgo. The saving symbol for five degrees of Virgo is a man becoming aware of natural spirits and normally unseen spiritual agencies. We have this energy again of finding our connection to, to spirit. The key word, okay, the key notes is an opening to new levels of consciousness. Wow. That's pretty potent. That's pretty potent for the North Node moving into Aries. And of course, Aries is all about the new. It's initiatory. It's a place we haven't been to yet, right? So it is about bringing in the new. And the key word here is imagination. What did I just say about imagination, right? It's right up there at the top of the tree. It's creative imagination. It's 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 creating your vision for the future, your future and the future of the world. You can't just like, you can only really, you only really have power over your own free will and the choices that you make. The society comes at you and, and gives you opportunities, sometimes points of destiny where you have to decide, am I gonna go this way or am I gonna go that way? That's the free will part, right? Um, and, uh, and the ruler of the south node now is Venus, which is currently at 29 degrees of Leo. Now, the south node is what we know. In, 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 in Libra, we're going to, it's about how we relate, how we relate. And the north node is about where we haven't been, but the south node is, is where we've been and what we know. And so let's look at the ruler here of, of that south node at 29 degrees of Leo. This is the same degree because, because Venus is pretty much standing still at this point that we have where, where Venus goes retrograde, okay? So it's sitting there at that degree pretty much um, until Saturday, well, even further than that because it, it changes direction, but it still takes a while to get out of that degree. So this degree is very important because it's in it 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 influences us, right? Um, and it says here, a mermaid emerges from the ocean waves, ready for rebirth in human form. The stage uh, at which an intense feeling, intuition, 
rising from the unconscious is about to take form uh, as a conscious thought. So something is coming out of that, the great, the, uncon the, the, the sea of, of the cosmic consciousness, the great cosmic sea, it is rising up. And so the, the mermaid is half human and half fish. So the bottom half is still connected to the cosmic consciousness where we're starting to emerge, right? From, from and, and breathe the air. That emergence is also an energy of, of Aries, right? So, so this is all about like a whole, a whole new life, guys, a whole new life. Of course, we don't miraculously, everything goes bing, everything's perfect because that's not the way life works. We have to work up towards it. We have, we'll be challenged. And remember Pluto is squaring the nodes. Pluto has been squaring the nodes since last year. It's not a new thing, right? But it's gonna be exact next week. So we're coming to a point, we're coming to a tipping point. And in fact, uh, the other day, uh, the, over the 4th of July weekend, that, that, that like three or four day weekend was the hottest day recorded temperatures on earth. We are at a tipping point and we have to decide how we are going to navigate this challenge. And a lot of it is gonna, we're gonna have to focus on ourselves and our relationships and who we're connected to so that we can move into this new world, so to speak. All right. So it says, um, the stage at which an intense feeling intuition rising from the unconscious is about to take form as a conscious thought. The key word here is yearning for conscious form and solidity. So we wanna make it real. We wanna make it real. And we can see here, here's the North Node in, um, in, in that last, in, in the 30th degree of um, Aries. Now this is um, for the US because I, I put it to, to, um, to Washington. We have a Scorpio rising, that's transformation, right? Change, transformation. Um, we have Pluto here at 29.13, okay? And we have the, the new moon that just happened, right? So we still have this going on here. We have the Yod, right? To Venus, the ruler of the South Node. And we're starting, we're getting closer to Saturn opposing the ruler of the North Node. And this opposition happens just, uh, what's his 17, just a few days later, the exact opposition. And we'll talk about what that means in relationship to uh, Saturn, the, the, the cycle of Saturn and Mars uh, specifically. So we can see we're, we're just on the cusp of something new, something, something turning. And we can see it in the outer world, we can see it with Trump being held accountable for what he's doing. We see it with, um, with what is going on with Putin and Russia and, and all that stuff, what's happening. Um, we're seeing it happen where the old guard is, is, needs to, to step aside really so that the new, the new consciousness can emerge, the new consciousness can emerge. Okay, let's continue here. So now we're looking at, uh, what day is this? Hold on. I have to move something here so I can see. Uh, July 20th, we have the sun making a waxing trine to Neptune. The sun makes a waxing self-expressive trine to Neptune. This is part of the sun-Neptune Sina that began on March 15th of 2023 at 26 degrees of Pisces. 26 degrees of Pisces is watching a very thin moon crescent appearing at sunset. Different people realize that the time has come to go ahead with their different projects. This is about focusing on what it is that you have in front of you and doing, doing your work, whatever that might be. And if you're aligning that with 
your inner core and you're aligning it with the soul, the soul wants us to um, unite. The soul wants us to rise up, so to, so to raise the energy. We're all sort of getting raised up. And when you're up higher, you have a better perspective, but you also have more responsibility. So this is not, this is of course not for the faint of heart. And we're all here doing this together. So none of us are faint of heart, no matter where you are, or who you are, or even what side of the, what side of this you're, you're working from, right? Some people are working to keep the status quo. We can see that in the, in the Supreme Court, uh, having all these regressive, these regressive things that they're passing, right? Um, and then, but, but, progress you know we move forward and and we are on a certain level uh awakened to things and um so we all have our part this pretty much says we all have our part and we can see this lovely trine here and it is a trine of self-expression so it has that leo energy to it right and Venus is in Leo, right? So, so this this Leo, 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 and we can see a lot of Leo out there, because we can see all these narcissists fighting for superiority, right? Whether it's Prigozhin and and um, and Putin, or it's uh, Zuckerberg and Musk, or if it's uh, you know all this like ego, ego, ego stuff. Now. Uh, now at this on this trine, the sun is at 28 degrees of Cancer. An Indian girl introduces her white lover to her assembled tribe. The inner rebirth through total acceptance of the primordial values manifests in the human body and its natural functions. This is about the white man getting introduced into the indigenous culture and the things that the indigenous understand is they understand the natural world. And so we need to bring in to this party the natural world. And the natural world is certainly making its presence known. Uh, so uh, even if we're even if we're silencing our indigenous populations, the earth itself is speaking to us. And we better start listening. Um, in a rebirth through a total acceptance. Oh, I said that. Yes, okay. I'll say it again. It's worth repeating. Uh, inner rebirth through a total acceptance of the primordial values manifested in the human body and its natural functions. And it's in a flowing trine to Neptune at 28 degrees of Pisces. A fertile garden under full moon reveals a variety of full grown vegetables, the full satisfaction of the individual's needs. And so this point says to us, we can, there is no lack, folks. There is no lack. We Lack is created by those people who want to keep us in fear and want to keep us chained, right? So this is showing us, this is reminding us that if we can get in a better relationship with nature, then, uh, and with each other, of course, we can work together too, so that everybody's needs are met. Everybody's needs are met. And honestly, Neptune is very much a social, socialism and energy. It's socialism. Yeah. Let's get society. So socialism, the word socialism comes from the word society, working together, working together instead of looking to some hierarchical despot to tell us what to do. We see how the hierarchical despots are, are, are acting and what's important to them. Not us. Not us. All right, so uh, let's continue. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, let's continue. <laughs> if I can find my little spot where I can continue from. Okay, here we go. Okay, the 20th of July, we have Mars opposing Saturn. Now remember, Mars is the ruler of the North Node now used to be the ruler of the south node co-ruled the south node when it was in scorpio with pluto okay so there was a switch there too which i didn't mention and venus was in charge at that time now venus is in the south node so venus isn't showing us the way forward venus is showing us what we need to deal with when it comes to our past okay 
when the south node was in scorpio we got to see our shadow that's why things look so terrible because because the south node was in scorpio bringing up all the shadow work that we need to attend to this the 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 swamp monsters, the 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 underlying, um, you know, hate and 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 the other, like the fear of the other, um, that we see in so many places, and of course the denigration of women. I mean, the world is suffering, and women and children are taking the brunt of it. So let's talk about this Mars oppos oppos opposition of Saturn to Mars. The planet of go opposing the planet of stop. <laughs> it's a point of awareness of what has come into fruition from the seeds planted at the Mars-Saturn conjunction that began uh, the Mars-Saturn synod. When was that? Well, that was 4-4-2022. It was the 4-4 um, portal. Check that video out. I'll put, a re I'll put something down below so you can check that video out if you want. That day was a 14-5 vibration. That's the temperance card. So there's a little hint there. Temper our actions, one foot in front of the others, walking the straight and narrow. But it's also a spiritual initiation. This is the start of a spiritual initiation. And, and we're getting, it's been processing. And now we look right at what we need to see when it comes to what is, what has come up. Like, it's almost like, Mr. Phelps, you just got your tape, right? You got to listen to the tape. For those of you old enough to know what I'm talking about. Um, so it began on that 4-4 portal, the big bear sitting down, waving all its paws, the self-discipline, which results from an intelligent development of individual faculties under proper training. Now we have Mars at seven degrees of Virgo. And the symbol is harem. The fateful, even if sought after, subservience to the vagrancies or desires of the emotional nature, opposing Saturn and Pisces, illuminated by a shaft of light, a large cross lies on rocks surrounded by a sea mist. The spiritual blessings which strengthens individuals who stand uncompromising in their own truth. So when you look at the symbol of a harem, the harem is, is the symbol of being there for somebody else's pleasure, right? And then this other one, this other symbol is standing for your own self, right? Standing for what it is that you, that is important to you. And so that's, that's the question. Are we slaves or are we co-creators? Are we slaves or are we co-creators? Next day, the sun makes an opposition to Pluto. Remember I said, when the sun opposes Pluto, we can have some um, challenges, <laughs> ego, ego maniacals. It'll be interesting to see what happens between Musk and uh, Zuckerberg if it hasn't already happened. Um, Fruition of the first half of the synodic cycle between the sun, Pluto. This is the point of awareness of what the soul, Pluto, has brought to light, the sun. This cycle began back on January 18th of 2023. This is a, a year cycle, um, which happened to vibrate to a 26-8. The 26-8 in the tarot is the page of wands, and the page of wands is the messenger wants is spirit. So this is messages from spirit. This particular conjunction occurred at 29 degrees of Capricorn, a woman reading tea leaves. The ability to see the signature of hidden meaning in every occurrence drawing one's attention. Keyword, clairvoyance. Clairvoyance. What do you see? What do you see? in your mind's eye. What is spirit saying to you? Now the sun is at 30 degrees of cancer, a daughter of the American Revolution. Interesting, it's a daughter of a re the American Revolution, the prestige and conservatism of long maintained heritage. 
and the glorification of the past as the key word opposite 30 degrees of Capricorn, a secret meeting of men responsible for executive decision in world affairs, the power to assume responsibility for crucial choices arrived at after mature discussion with those who share this power. And the key word here is executive power. So there is a simultaneous ability to stand upon the past, okay? And make decisions on how to move forward. What is the executive power here? We all have executive power, that's free will. That's free will, we have the, the power to choose, don't we, do we not? And of course, this makes this, uh, the nodes, look how close this opposition is now to the nodes of the moon, right? I mean, we're, now we're at 2911, right? 2911 and we're at 2907. So not very much further when this is gonna be exact and that happens uh, next week. All right, let's continue. The 22nd, the sun oh, moves into Leo. Moves into Leo. Interestingly enough, it happens on the 22nd. That day vibrates to a 36.9, which if you look over to the right, is the 10 of wands, the burden bearer. Um, so we're moving into the sun and Leo with a lot of, we're holding on to a lot of things, right? Ultimately, the nine is about letting go. And so through this process of the sun and Leo, you will start to let go of things that you do not, you no longer need. Either you've accomplished it. Okay, so it could just be like, I have these 10 things that have to get done. And so little by little, they get done. And you can hand over the wand or you can drop it or whatever it is that you need to do. It's also a time when if you have a lot of things to do, it's a good time to organize those things. Or remember Mars, ruler of the North Node, which isn't really have much to, not necessarily connected to the Sun and Leo per se, except that the Sun and Leo is, well, square the node. So yeah, I guess it does, um, is to organize yourself, right? To organize your life, to get, get everything sort of lined up. So as you move forward, it gets easier and easier. The sun uh, is in its, in its rulership, right, Leo. Um, one degree of Leo is blood rushes to a man's head as his vital energies are mobilized under the spur of the ambition. An eruption of biophysical energies into the ego controlled field of consciousness. And the key word here is conflagration. This is a very intense and important um, um, points. Remember, Leo is the height of ego. So during this period, those ego maniacs out there, you'll probably hear about a lot about them as well. And we can see that the sun here in Leo, whoops, excuse me. The sun here in Leo is still opposite, very tightly opposite. Pluto, square the nose. Yeah. Let's see, is it doing anything else? Mm, nope, pretty much that's it. Okay. And Venus stationing retrograde. Now I know you're looking at this and you're going, ah, what is that? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna chunk it down. But what I wanted to show here is the interconnectedness of everything that's happening right now. I mean, it truly is a web. So Venus stations retrograde at 29 degrees of Leo. We have the mermaid emerging from the ocean, ready for rebirth in human forms. The stage at which an intense feeling, intuition rising from the unconscious is about to take form into conscious light. The mermaid personifies a stage of awareness still partially enveloped by the ever moving and ever elusive ocean of the collective unconscious. Yet ready, already half formulated by the conscious mind. And the key words here are yearning for conscious uh, form, form and solidity. And so this is the point where Venus stops its, or apparently, because it doesn't really ever stop, 
just from from the geocentric point, it looks like it's stuck and starts to retrograde, starts to move what, what looks like backwards in the sky to us, eventually coming to a conjunction to the sun um, and then continuing retrograde and then coming back over that. So, so Venus is retrograde for 42 days. I think it's 40 or 42 days this time. And so um, this is a long process. And of course, that's just when it's retrograde, we have to include the pre-shadow and the post-shadow energy. So there's a lot of time where we are mulling over this question of what is it that is being is being born out of us? What is what is coming into conscious um, conscious? What is what is being created really? That's and the story. What is being created? All right, let's break, let's cut the let's let's chunk this down a little bit. In this chart, we have a grand square. We talked about this. The grand square, of course, is um, the sun, which actually hasn't moved into Leo yet. It's right at the very end. You can see 2959, like right at the tippy tippy end of uh, of cancer. Um, the sun at 30 degrees of Cancer, Pluto at 30 degrees of Capricorn, this north node at 30 degrees of Aries, the south node 30 degrees of Libra, right? Grand, cardinal grand square. Cardinal grand squares are initiations. It's a doorway to a new way of being. And you can get stuck in that doorway unless there are other things that are influencing the, the planets making up that doorway. Is there a trine? Is there a sextile to, to one of the points of this, of this giant square? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. There's also some inconjuncts to this grand square, but, but if we look and some squares, so there's some challenges and there's some, um, well, it's a grand square, so of course it'd be squares. But if you look here, so let's just look at the red part here, right? This, 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 and this. And then of course the two oppositions, which you have to have to have a grand square. We have a sextile to Neptune. We have a, let's see, and Neptune is trine the sun. It's also in conjunct the south node and in conjunct Venus, okay, right? But so we have Neptune here. So Neptune is a key to the, to that unlocks the door that we can open. And Neptune is cosmic consciousness, cosmic consciousness. Let's see, is there anything else connecting? Yes, the moon. Oh, here we go. The moon is actually opposite Neptune. Uh, 28 degrees, like almost almost exactly, just a little bit past that. So it's this moon Neptune energy. The moon is Neptune is the amorphous, and the moon is 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 physicality, it's body, it's 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 soul to a certain extent, right? So so it's and it's unconscious and it's conscious. And there's a conscious part, there's an unconscious part of the moon, or subconscious part of the moon. But this is like life on earth and our spiritual purpose, right? So, so this is, I, I just, I don't even know how to express how, how powerful and important this, this moment in time is for all of us. Um, so align with the divine, align with the divine. Uh, Venus makes a semi-sextile to the sun. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? What, what, what did I write here? We also have Venus making a semi sextile to the sun. So let's look at that. Here's the sun, and here's Venus. Okay, it's a Venus oh, semi sextile. Where is it? Venus, sun, Venus. Okay, a Venus here. Oops, I can't even see what I'm doing here. Venus semi sextile to the sun. Venus in conjunct Pluto. Venus in conjunct Pluto. Uh, Venus trine the North Node, and Venus sextile the South Node. So this this is showing the importance of Venus, of course, uh, how it 
connects with these these uh, these four points as well. So it semi sextiles the sun, which is part of the square. It makes an inconjunct to Pluto, which is part of the square. It makes a trine to the north node which is part of the square, and it makes a sextile to the south node. So Venus has got her fingers in all of the, all four points of this square. And of course, if you add, well, we'll look at it next. I don't wanna do that yet. Okay, here's where we add. We also have a mystic rectangle in this, and I did this in silver, so it's right here. We have the sun and the moon, they're sextile each other. This opens the lines of communication. It's part of the, it's the first really aspect of the synodic cycle between the sun and the moon. And this was the new moon that just happened a couple of days ago, right, in, in Cancer. Um, and we have a um, sextile between Neptune and Pluto. And we know because it makes a, a, a yod to, to to Venus here, but this is, so so Pluto and Neptune, two transpersonal planets working together, okay? And then we have a trine between Pluto and the moon and the sun and Neptune, and it creates this mystic rectangle. This is a way of sort of creating, this is sort of a creating your own reality kind of energy here as well, okay? Uh, Pluto, moon, Pluto, Neptune, all very sort of ethereal uh, energies, although the moon in Virgo isn't particularly ethereal, but there is a part of the moon that's sort of unknown. So there's a lot of energy of unknown here, okay? And then we have two yodes. Uh, my personal favorite, I guess, not always, seeing as I have two yodes, and I think I have three yodes in my chart, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, we could do that another day. Uh, Venus at the apex of Pluto and Neptune, and Neptune, the higher octave of Venus, at the apex of Venus and the south node. So we have these two yodes. Here's one here. This is the one pointing to Venus. And here's the other one, sextile, here pointing to Neptune. And Venus and Neptune are in conjunct each other, and Venus is the higher octave. I mean, Neptune is a higher octave of Venus. Love and compassion, love and compassion. So I think that part of this journey with Venus may actually be um, the balance between compassion for others where you're giving your power away because of your compassion. So that's like the super empath, right? Oh, I'm so empathetic. I'm so, I'm feeling all the feelings. You're feeling everybody's feelings and you're not considering yourself. Right? And those who have no empathy. So this is really that sort of empathy, lack of empathy. And we can almost see that in the opposition between Neptune and moon here, because the moon in Virgo can be a very pragmatic, practical, I don't have time for feelings right now. There's too much work to be done. And then you have Neptune there and Pisces going, I love everybody, I love everybody. Let me tell you, I have my moon in Pisces. <laughs> this is like every day for me, right? But that's really, I think, where where this is, this, this is also a possibility of what's being opened to us to look at and, and evaluate in our lives. And as Pluto, squares the nodes, the resolution node for that is the south node in, in Libra. So we have to ask ourselves, where have we given our power away? Pluto in Capricorn is about taking responsibility for yourself. And when you don't take responsibility for yourself, you're giving your power away. And, and let me tell you, those narcissists out there are just all ready to take it. Like, yeah, okay, you you don't care about yourself? Well, I'm going to utilize your energy to get what I want. So these are some of the, see, see some of the themes that, that we are, we're dealing with. So, um, and then the next day, and we're not going to do this today. We'll do this next week. We have Pluto square the nodes on the 23rd, Pluto squares the nodes on the 25th, Pluto square the nodes on the 28th. So the net, all of next week, 
is really uh, Pluto square the nodes, Palooza, uh, and decisions need to be made. So that's the story, Morning Glories. All right, let's stop this year. Hi. So hopefully um, I conveyed how very important this week is and the and the the next week and of course the weeks we just had. So it's an important time to be alive and uh, thank you for being alive with me. It's nice to have some, to, people to share this with. So thank you so very much. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Like and subscribe if you would like to uh, be a patron of mine. The, my patron people get this first. Um, and then the more patrons I get, the more special stuff I can do on Patreon. Um, or you could just give me a thumbs up and a like. That would be great. And um, as far as Patreon, $5 a month. If you, Of course, if you can do it. I'm not saying that it's easy. Um, and you get uh, you can get more and more of this if you find this helpful. So all right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Align, align with the divine. Take care, everyone. Namaste.